Hello everyone, Scruffy Golden here. I released my first Starlink video on February 3rd, 2022, and today is April 17th, 2022, and it is mind-blowing how much has changed in just two and a half months. When I first released that video, the monthly service fee for Starlink was $99, and the hardware would set you back $499. Now that monthly fee is $110 and the hardware is going to cost you $549 or $599 depending on whether you've got a deposit down already or not. Back then it was a complete guessing game as to where Starlink service existed or where you'd be able to place an order. But now they've got a map that removes all of the guessing from placing an order and a heck of a lot of the guessing from where you can move your address to. Speaking of moving your service, when that video came out just a couple of months ago, you could not use your Starlink service more than about 100 feet from where you had your address registered. Now, with roaming, you can take your Starlink dish and use it miles away from your registered service. How far can you travel without changing your address? Does roaming work out of the box? How do you activate roaming and how do I know if it's working? And can I roam Starlink into another country? These are just a few of the questions I've received lately and in this video we're going to answer these and more. So let's get into it. So what is roaming and why is it such a big deal? So much has changed in the last few months that it's hard to remember a time when you had to use your service at the registered location and though you could change your address it was a serious pain in the butt you had to call a starlink support number talk to a human ask a person to change the address for you and though accounts differ there's no doubt it took longer for the change to take effect than it does now then in late 2021 google made a change to their website that allowed you to avoid calling in you could change your address online not only was this way more convenient, but it allowed you to also use Google Plus codes and drag and drop a map in addition to physical addresses. This allowed you to move your address to places you couldn't even get to when you called the support number. And now the changes take place in just minutes. And while that was nice, through all of this, you still had to use your service at the registered location. Roaming has changed all of this. You can still change your address if you like, but this is a game changer if you're a digital nomad who wants to work full time in her RV, trailer, or camper. So when did roaming become available? Roaming is a very recent thing. Starlink rolled this out very selectively at first to only a few people who seemed to notice their service was working beyond their location somewhere around March 6th or 7th. Then more and more people reported they had it over the ensuing weeks, and by about April 7th, it seems like it had been turned on for everybody or nearly everybody. So how far can you move from your registered location? Well, that remains to be seen, but clearly you can move quite a ways, uh, at least hundreds of miles and across state lines in the United States. How do you activate roaming? Roaming is something Starlink turns on and off at its leisure in the background. It's automatic, it's invisible, and to my knowledge, there's no way for you to turn it on or off on your own not that you'd want to turn it off. How do you know if roaming has been activated on your account? So this is something I've wanted to clear up for a while because I think this is a data point that's been misinterpreted along the way. Many of the people who noticed they had roaming in the early days were diehard RVers using Starlink on the road. And two things happened. They'd wander a little bit and started to notice that their service was still working when in the past it hadn't been. And many of them stare at their statistics a lot and noticed that a new variable had shown up on the list, in a variable called roaming. And that roaming was either true or false. And many people thought if roaming equals true, then that means Starlink has turned on roaming for that service. In fact, this variable is actually indicating whether you are using roaming at that moment or not. The fact that it's on the list at all means you've got the upgrade in which Starlink gave you roaming. If it says true, your system is outside of its registered location and is using roaming. If it says false, it means that you are frankly sitting on top of your address and you can check this for yourself. Turn on your dish, sit on top of your address and check your debug status and I'll show you how to do that in a second and you'll notice that roaming equals false. Go a few miles down the road and try again though and you'll see that roaming equals true. If you want to see this for yourself, go into the Starlink app on your cell phone, go to settings, scroll to the bottom, hit advanced, then press the debug data button at the bottom of that list. Now I usually collapse the device section so that I can see the dish section. And you're looking for an area called alerts underneath the dish section. Under alerts, you should see roaming equals true or false. 
By the way, if you found the information in this video useful or helpful so far, I'd really appreciate it if you'd whack the like button down below so that this video could spread to more people. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, big heads up. If you don't see roaming on that list, don't panic. That doesn't mean that Starlink hasn't given you roaming. If you're watching this video, you are almost certain to have had roaming turned on with your service. Bear in mind, this variable indicates whether you're using roaming or not. In other words, if you don't see roaming, it probably means you haven't gotten connected to the internet at all or your dish can't see the sky or something. So how do you know if you have roaming or not? Again, if you're watching this video, in all likelihood you do have it turned on. But the only real way to know whether you have roaming or not is to either pick up your dish and walk away from your service location or leave your dish right where it's at, move your address away and see if the service still works. If it does, you're roaming. So here's a heads up. I was helping a friend set up her Starlink service and she was clearly getting internet service dozens of miles away from her registered location, but the roaming equaled false in her debug setup. So if this happens to you, don't be surprised. It could have been that she was activating from outside her area. I don't know, but it did catch up after a few minutes. And this is something to be aware of as well. When you turn on that dish in a location that's far from your registered address, it can sometimes take a long time for the service to settle itself down, to find the satellites, get internet flowing, and settle down. And by settle down, I mean I've seen the dish go online, offline, online, offline several times over five, seven, and maybe even 10 minutes while it tried to figure things out. Be patient. It has always settled down and found its way in my experience, but it can be a little unnerving at first to wait long enough for it to take care of business. If I'm a new customer, is roaming activated out of the box or do I need to perform a software upgrade? First of all, Starlink upgrades the software in the background. It's automatic and it's invisible, so you don't have to do anything yourself. Furthermore, since you're watching this video, all dishes are coming out with roaming set to go out of the box so you don't have to do anything. If an area is dark on the Starlink availability map, am I able to roam into it? So I'm gonna have to give an it depends answer on this one, but the answer is still pretty exciting. There are bound to be more combinations of things that affect service in locations around the globe than I can possibly anticipate. One that's a no-brainer, if there is no satellite overhead, then you're not going to get Starlink internet service in that location, no matter how badly you want it. Having said that, there are areas on the Starlink map that won't let you place an order into them, won't let you change your address into them, but absolutely let you roam into them. Can I roam with Starlink across the border into Mexico? I love this question. Unfortunately, it's one that I can't answer because I haven't had a chance to test it for myself. Remember that moving your address into an area and roaming into an area are two different things. At least until recently, you are not allowed to move your address across a national border. And I'm assuming that has to do with the telecommunications laws in each country. Whether you can roam across the national border or not, I just don't know. But I'd love to hear from my viewers if you've successfully done it. Have you gone from Canada into the US or the US into Mexico? For those of you on the European continent, are you able to go into other countries successfully? Please drop a comment down below and let us know. We'd love to hear your experience. I can roam once my equipment is activated, but am I able to activate outside of my service location? Yes, you can. And in fact, I proved this to myself firsthand just a few days ago. Helping a friend set up her Starlink, she was able to place an order at her vacation home, but absolutely activated it out of the box at her primary home more than 200 miles away. I have two videos that can help you quite a bit. One is how to get Starlink in one week and the other is about the Starlink availability map. Now, I should have the links to both of these videos on the screen right now. I will also put links in the description down below. I promise that the mobility and the possibilities that Starlink roaming provides are life-changing. So go grab your Starlink, live without compromise, and I'll see you out there.